You should get pushed down by the neck, Andrew, and you should get curb stomped is Mr. Wes Watson's input. Okay, interesting. What is up, everyone? It's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's ASMR spritz is some intelligent neon. Be sure to buy it to smell it, but hear your noises. That was a bad one. All right, welcome to another BS Cloud Grab. Oh man, well, I got a juicy one for you. Um, So I, I, <laughs> I've been sent this one a couple of times by my friends to react. I have one of my friends who's been in the penitentiary and has been obsessed with Wes Watson ever since he became a social media icon. Um, he brought to my attention that, <laughs> and my friend has been following Wes Watson forever because like it reminds him of when he was in the pen and how he always just wilds out on social media. Uh, he got involved with drama with one of the top natural bodybuilder channels in the world, Jeff Nippard. Jeff Nippard is an accomplished natural bodybuilder and a science-based lifter with all the intellectual backing to prove it and all the data backing to prove it. And if you're looking for training techniques or anything of that manner, Jeff Nippard has an extensive catalog of extremely well-made, well-documented videos that are backed by scientific data that, in my opinion, as Sigma Russo, right, you can't really argue and debate him presenting data. And he looks absolutely amazing for a bodybuilder that's completely natural that I believe is natural. And he's put his money where his mouth is, unlike Russo, and stepped on stage as a complete natural and he constantly maintains peak shape all the time and he's actually very strong accomplished well-spoken and able to create very nicely edited videos for years on end that apparently sparked um some caveman mark van wick i think is his name and they had a bit of an altercation in the gym so mark van wick i guess i guess you could just argue like he's just like a typical like stereotypical juice head this I already tried to watch this and it's kind of spoiling that I didn't watch this fresh because I had to see what was going on because I was telling Andrew how much of a fan I am of watching like Wes Watson's like a giant penitentiary meme. A lot of people take him seriously like my friends who have served time they they, they love him as like an iconic meme. So when I heard that he was involved in this situation, I had to react because Mark Van Wick was confronted by one of my favorite um, entertainment vloggers, Eric Konevsky. The best in history is, you know, Eric Konevsky's thing. And Eric Konevsky called out Mark Van Wick and Eric Konevsky's a big dog, right? He's about the same size as Mark Van Wick. And I forget what he was calling him out for. So yeah, Eric approached him and essentially made direct death threats immediately, like straight up death threats on the expo floor for, again, trying to have a conversation, a debate. When you're dealing with someone like Mark, there's obviously um, an implication that this guy has a lot of street edge and that the ego is extremely fragile. So with these types of individuals that possess street edge, you have to be very coherent that they do not want to debate normally. They do not want to interact in a point where they feel any more belittled because they are already belittling themselves daily. You have to be very careful when someone is in street edge high guard like that, not to fuck around with her high guard because it is not an attack on you rather it is a defense on them and that happens a lot with these street edge type personas is people who aren't around those types of people don't understand what they're doing and that like when someone is rised like that you kind of have to match the rise for them to like unfold and open up and if you've never dealt with an individual like that you don't understand what's going on and that could be rooted in extreme trauma they never got through and that seems to be the thing that's going on with this guy you know the typical juice head like like big dude walking around, little dude in the show. Eric Konevsky basically roughs him up about some simple things and he decides to go after Jeff Nippard. You're, you're picking on a dude who's credible, backed by credible science, by a caveman, essentially, like a Neanderthal. Like, let's be real here, dude. You, you're you walking around like this is like, Andrew, it's like the high school boy. Hey, let's pick on the small guy. I just got picked on by Eric Konevsky. Like, that's what's going on here. So sorry, John Bravo. Everyone check out John Bravo. I'm lazy and dude's got a watermarked up. 
You know, Johnny Bravo's right in the middle, but Russo's gonna paradox over him. I'm gonna do a double reaction cloud grab, I guess. So again, Jeff is not afraid to intellectually, let's, let's re say that, intellectually debate this guy. Mike, I don't know what intellectually is going on with him to even start this beef, because number one, like the clout amassed by Jeff, it's like, it's, it's an obvious like, dude, it's not even the same level, man. I don't know what you're doing with this. Like this could backfire, be extremely bad. You know, that that's, that's what I would be as his right hand going into this. But we know this is all ego driven. But afterward, I'm going to be very curious to see what people have to say after they see this. But the footage, again, was very hard to get, but I did everything I could. So again, looking at the footage, Mike instigates like a bully saying, sup, Jeff shrugs it off. Again, he could have intellectually debated him. Um, he's deciding to showcase that he is fragile right onto him. To bring it all to you before anybody else. Well, this is the footage. We're going to take a look together again. The first time all right, Mike says, what's up? So we see uh, Jeff and Mike exchange and it looked like it looks like Jeff had a smile and it looks like Mike turned around said something to him and then Jeff continues working out so Jeff is in his bag about his business with one of his cameramen he's doing work I don't know if Mike is envious of Jeff's status I don't know if Mike is envious of Jeff's authority that's backed by science you know it's just like he's backed by data um, obviously getting in his space, trying to pop his bubble, trying to fuck with them. And he doesn't want to intellectually debate, just simply intellectually debate Jeff and the internet will judge. Instead, he does the alpha beta move of what's up <laughs> and then walks away. You know, it's just one of these things where am I watching grown men or am I watching like the high school bully? You know, it's just like. This is what makes me perplexed about the fitness industry all the time. The divas cameraman is there. We see him filming him. It looks like a nice gym. Now we see Mike over here. Okay. So Mike comes over over here to the equipment rack to get something. Doesn't look like he looks at Jeff and he goes back and he was training his client. And Jeff is there filming. And now watch. So Jeff says something to his cameraman. And it looks like he calls over to Mike. All right. Jeff is actually, believe it or not, being the big man in the situation and standing on business. And he's going to go confront Jeff to have an intellectual conversation. Zoom in here. It looks like he calls his name. Mike looks over. His cameraman follows. Jeff says something to his cameraman. And now they go over to Mike and the cameras. Jeff is not afraid of this bully. Jeff is confronting him and he wants to showcase the IQ difference. He did not agree to fight. He did not instigate to, hey, you know, we're going to have a fist fight. You could easily call out someone to do a fist fight, to go in a cage, to go in a ring. You could put up show money. You could call him out like, hey, you won't show for this amount. You're talking that shit. Talk shit, get hit. We'll do a professional. We'll do it with an ambulance. We'll set it up the right way. No, this isn't how it's going to go. Pointed at Mike. And now. So this is exactly, you know, the type of behavior that you would expect from someone with street edge. So I am for Jeff, but. When you're dealing with an individual like Mike, you know that high guard is high, right? He's in high guard. He is fragile. Um, him not approaching him. You already won, Jeff. Um, you want to stand on business. I'm not going to be bullied. This guy's using my name for views, using my name for money and disregarding all my achievements. And I want to have an intellectual conversation. You're talking to a street edge guy. The street edge guy is already fragile. He's already broken. So you're going up to a broken male who is about to explode. And you have to realize when one of these street edge individuals is in that high guard because something happened to him 
that his ego never recovered and that's probably why he's that size that's probably why he's so emotionally all over the place to a point where when the dude who can beef him eric konevsky comes up and beef him you can see him baited down and that that was held internally and that's being taken on Jeff, who wants to intellectually destroy him. The high guard was probably not detected by Jeff, and Jeff is just tired of this guy ruining his name for no reason, and he won't say anything. So this is one of those situations where both of them were asking for the wrong type of smoke. Obviously, Mike is going to get wrecked by Jeff, and Mike does the little bitch boy move. He takes him, he throws him. It looks like he's tripped over that bench. They get closer together. They exchange words and it, and look, notice the cameraman put his camera down. He's not filming this footage at this point. I'll get into that later. It takes Jeff again. That is completely unacceptable. Mike, you have no control of yourself, no control of your emotions. Why not do this to a guy the same size? How about you go in an MMA gym, right? You're going to find your match. I've always met my maker in a fucking MMA gym. You know, there's always going to be that dog who's more of a dog than you. You getting so butthurt over him defending himself after you take the shot to a point where you can't intellectually debate him because you'll get destroyed. So you have to not only lash out, right? And maybe Jeff didn't detect your street edge. Maybe Jeff has never dealt with someone with street edge and high guard and, you know, how people on the street, you know, they kind of a little bit different as far as that goes especially when it's fragility he's fragile right he's a fragile to a point where he can't even deal with jeff's intellect coming around him because if that gets clipped he's done for and he asked for that smoke and i get jeff knows that he asked for that smoke it's just like with these individuals they're already broken internally you know and the second the second push on jeff is a showcase that he wasn't willing to do that to eric konevsky at all He's only doing that to Jeff to make himself feel good. And it's like a disgusting act when Jeff wants to literally just be like, hey, man, this is my opinion based on all this money backed by credible data. You know, you're a big dude. I'm not I'm not like hating on you that you don't know how to lift. It's it's obvious. We, we already saw Jeff's professional retort to this guy. You just you know, in your mind, OK, he's already defeated. And I've had instances where I've dealt with street edge people where you you need to detect when they're in high guard, like, hey, hey, like you, you might be intellectually better than me. I'm in street edge. I'm in high guard. Like it's not worth the smoke, right? It's not worth it. It's not it's not worth reapproachment. It's not. Pushes him by his throat. Jeff has his hands up. He doesn't want any part of this. I don't blame him. And then take a look here at the cameraman. He pushes the cameraman. Absolutely crazy. Because Mike was the instigator, obviously intellectually he's going to be defeated. So I guess the physicality of him abusing all that gear and ruining his body when Jeff and the cameraman aren't doing that, he's going to extort that advantage when Eric Konevsky basically bullied the bully already and he backed down, you know, he bowed down in that situation. All that energy is being reverberated onto Jeff for essentially no reason. You know, it seemed like the bully looked for a target and just because of Jeff's stature, not Jeff's achievements, not Jeff's information being backed by medical data, not Jeff's ability to actually be in his own vibration as his own star, not needing to pry on other people, you know, to a point where you're just essentially like, it's a, it's a stupid rake, you know, it's a stupid rake of clout. He walks away. And that's what we have here on the footage. All right. So I was going to leave that alone. You know, I feel like both of them learned a big lesson there. I don't think it was like one learned a lesson and one did it. First off, Mike, Dude, you're on the fast track to end your brand, period. You know, assaulting people in the gym who want to have a debate, right? If you didn't want to talk, you could simply ask to fight. He's going to deny it and then be like, okay, 
I apologize for raking at your brand. I'm not going to do it again. We have different beliefs. I think that my information is based on my experience and it works well for me and my clients. Your information is based medically backed like crazy and it obviously worked for your career. There's pictures of you on stage shredded as fuck as a full natty. You maintain peak natty form year after year after year after year. We can agree to disagree. I apologize for letting my fragile ego vomit on you. Eric Konevsky bullied me as I was bullying other people and I backed down. I internalized it and I sprayed it on you for no reason. I really need to work on myself internally. Let's move on. Jeff should be like, Mike, I understand you had a disagreement. I wanted to intellectually destroy you and embarrass you and break your ego farther than it already is on camera. I needed to understand that you are a street edge individual. I like to confront my bullies, but when you're dealing with someone with straight up fucking street edge, they there's no reasoning with them, right? There's no reasoning. They are, you know, I don't bark, I bite. There's no talking, it's I bite, you know? And I've been around individuals like that where they'll put on a boy mask. I know they're in street edge and they're they're trying to get me to fuck up around them. They're trying to get me to fuck up around, around them to teach me one lesson and bark me down so they, they get power over that. And I've, I've just had experiences like that from very young to very much my mid twenties, you know? And when you're around individuals like that, there's no point to intellectually debate them. They have already defeated themselves internally. They need to work on themselves. And when he said, what's up and walked away and Jeff is owning the space as the bigger male, my two cents, if I was his right hand right there, I would advise him not to approach Mike because he is already in ego death. He's in ego death, you know? He's struggling, he's clawing around with his brand. It was already stupid for him to call out you and you intellectually defeated him. There's no point to intellectually belittle him and shatter him more because he is already facing internal damage. I would not ever do that to any street guy. You know, they don't play around and they are very much, I don't bark, I bite, and that's what he got. So there's a learning lesson for both of them. That high guard was created for a reason, right? That high guard, something happened to him where he, he built this high guard to where you can't get to him and anything is just gonna met, be met with physicality because the ego behind the high guard is already damaged. And it seemed like Eric really got through the high guard because he matched him and he looked for the easiest target. Jeff is not the easiest target, but like, I guess the stature of Jeff, not the, you know, prowess of Jeff, <laughs> you know, he went right up to him. No bullshit, no fear. And yeah, he just, they both played a stupid game. They both won a stupid prize. If Jeff just owned the room and then went online again and said, yeah, he didn't even want to have a debate. He didn't even want to come up to me. Um, he never answered my debate and we were in the same room and he didn't want to debate. Where he went wrong is he he stepped. You don't step to a guy with street edge. He don't want to debate. He's already in defeat. He's already in high, 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 high guard. I was going to let it go. <laughs> but my favorite fucking meme of the penitentiary life, and I've always been putting Andrew onto this guy, is Wes Watson. This guy has so many bars and he's he's like the embodiment meme of like the white boy that's been on the yard. You know, it's just like me and Russ will just die while <laughs> Wes Watson so much. It's so funny. Uh, but Wes Watson got involved because when street dudes get involved, you know, he's got to pull the street aura from the fellow street dude. So, yeah, Wes Watson went on fresh and fit on big quotation marks, how to be a man. Wes Watson is more like, okay, I'm going to be this character. It seems to be working great. But yeah, when you saw him go on fresh and fit and even like the podcast host, they're just like, thank God this guy came on. They just gave us like 80 fucking clips where they're asking about family, how materialism, sure. It's cool. I'm not against materialism. If you have things for aura and they mean something to you, sure. But like, Wes Watson's like, add to cart, 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 add to cart. I sell courses that tell you how to sell courses and I uplift you by telling you you can do it and then charging you, which means you can't do it because I charge you. Like, he's like one of those guys. So 
he's he's going down that sin cycle, I guess. You know, it's just like he's so entertaining. This is why I had to react to it because he's seeing some some street biz shit, some street shit went down, and like he's got to weigh in on it to get his street aura. So I'm just saying, Wes Watson is like legitimately like Andrew. You don't get a Bugatti unless you have the money to instantly get the Bugatti, right? And he's got, I think he's got a pure sport, which says they're sitting around or over 4 million for the car. So Wes Watson be selling a lot of courses. Wes Watson has some sort of funnel figured out and Wes Watson has already been raided. His penthouse has been raided by the feds already. So again, you know, this is one of the entertaining meme characters that I truly, I truly like following. And, you know, Russ and I have always been obsessed over his, his clout rise is fucking funny. I'll just say it like that. He pays for these girls. Uh, Chip Riani, and she walked by with her dog, and I jumped up out of the table. My homie goes, oh, that one's your style. That's a hot one. Andrew, that, that one's your style, man. That one's hot. That other one's not hot, but that one's hot. That That's instantly your style because she's hot. Well, what about her frequency or her? In nope, she's hot. We can joke about this, but like he is programming all these people to be like, I gotta get the hot one. Like, no, nah, you gotta see the one that like, the compatibility, right? That's like where you're wondering, I don't know, you're wondering where Wes Watson ends up because he's in a very crazy path. You wonder if he differs from this path or not. So I jumped up off the table where we were eating. I ran over there, I said, what's up? What are you doing? What's your name? Andrew, that was his pull, you know? he He's like eating, just like, he's like a prisoner. Like, he's still like at his like, lunch table. <laughs> Oh, that one's hot. He's like rises up. He just comes up. He's like, what's up? I'm Wes. Like, is that, is that how you, is that how you get a dumb man? Like, no, dude, you fucking went on a website. You're like, all right, this one's a hundred grand for two months. Roll with this one for a bit. Boom. Shows up at the door. Mail order. And my Instagram was down at the time, so I couldn't even flex the gram. On. Couldn't flex the gram. It was down at the time, you know, how to show the blue. I Hey, what's up? I, I have a blue check, but like, I don't have my blue check right now, but here's, it, it's going to come. It's down right now, but I got a blue check. Boom. Bag that pussy. On her. But I was like, let me come pick you up a little bit. And she's like, what are you talking about? Like, no, like she barely spoke. He speaks English. And then she fucking, I just sat there for a little bit, convinced her, came and picked her up. And uh, we've been vibing ever since. And you know why he does this shit? He wants people to see him online. And and yells at the landscaper to shut up. In the meat. All right. So again, Wes is an actual prisoner. I think a lot of people don't. He's in high guard still. He's in high guard. He's got street edge. If you've never been around these people again, like you have to match their rise. So when he's yelling, like if the landscaper matched his rise, he'd let the high guard down. Nobody's going to know that. No normal, no normal guy is going to know that. You know, he's out of prison. He has to evolve and adapt into a normal fucking businessman. Yelling at a landscaper that you're paying that you don't want to do that work. You know, I have a house cleaner. I thank her every time she comes over for cleaning my bathrooms and actually fucking doing it the right way. Not like ADHD Shrek Russo. If I had to get in the bathroom, I wouldn't be like, get the fuck out. I have to get in the bathroom, peasant. You know, that's a disgusting display of where Wes Watson is at. But you have to remember where Wes Watson came from. He came from being on a yard in a prison where when you're on the yard, everyone is in an extreme high guard everyone don't trust everyone right you could end up being bad things could happen if you don't maintain that high guard if you're looked at as weak not in high guard you're the target so he's still trauma programmed by being on that yard and taking it out on people that have no idea what what he's been through and they don't need to know or feel what he's been through he needs to move on and accept and reflect and realize that this is not a good look and with the social media fame he's amassing i'm sure there are people who are going to start pointing bare 50 cows at him you know about what happened to him 
in prison. Somebody made him. Got a shiny head like him. He's got tattoos like And going around of some... Oh, Jeff. There's a video online going around of some monster-ass fool pushing some keyboard warrior princess... You know, it's just like one of these things where I don't know if he does this just to do it, just to get clicks, just to get a rise out of people, just to show that, like, you don't fuck with street dudes. Even when the street dude tries to rake his clout for no reason, you don't fuck with street dude. Like, dude, come on, man. Listen, he pushed him by his neck. You pussies are in the comments going, he should press charges. No. He should get pushed by the neck and then get his head stepped on. And everybody else should say, good bitch, don't. He should get pushed down by the neck, Andrew, and he should get curb stomped as Mr. Wes Watson's input. Okay, interesting. You know, this is one of those things where like, bro, we, we, aren't on, we are not on the yard, okay? Mike fucking called jeff out jeff didn't even take a shot and it broke the fucker's ego right he just basically said here's my stats what do you want to debate man then jeff wants to confront his bully because he's no fear he's actually a man the fucking man child who's juiced up to the gills fucking walking around at 200 whatever pounds implodes and hits him and that's a good thing and he should have went ahead and curb stomped him we all should have went good Eric Konevsky already stepped to him. He fucking stepped. Eric stepped. That dude didn't want no smoke of the dude the same size. Are you forgetting that Eric stepped? Eric stepped. He stepped right to him. Nothing fucking happened. Defeated. Beta. 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 We don't need to showcase this stupid bullying behavior as good. He, he that street, that street shit, bro. Sure, Jeff should have realized how fragile that dude actually was. And sure, when you have street edge, when you're in high guard like that, you should just let him, he's already defeated. There's absolutely zero fucking point. That's what you should be saying, Wes, is that that guy was already defeated. There was zero fucking point. You should have just sat, filmed your video to all your subscribers that are way more than Mike will ever have, fucking or it up the room. It's bigger. He's not going to do shit to you. You shouldn't have went up to him and actually tried to intellectually debate him and defuse that. You can't defuse a street edge high guard dude. He can't defuse himself. All right, what's the takeaways? If someone is blaring street edge high guard, don't debate him. He's already defeated internally. I have tried to debate dudes in street edge high guard. There's a specific scenario in fourth grade where I got knocked out. I went back, tried to debate. People got mauled, okay? There was no point for me to go back. I should have detached. I should have detached. I learned a lesson there. In my college years and to where I moved to Tacoma and got the street edge life again, I learned very quickly it's just best to avoid altercation and true Gs fly low. True Gs don't go around physically assaulting higher intellectual dudes to try and prove they're the better man. They're not. Jeff was the bigger man in the situation the entire time. Jeff needs to learn that if a dude street edge high guard, there's absolutely no point in going up and debating him because there's a reason why that high guard street edge is up. His ego is already broken as the only thing that is protecting that guy from imploding emotionally. And Jeff wanted to hurt him even more. He should have just ore it up in the gym. Oh, that guy didn't even want to debate me the entire time. Should have went on IG, sparked him even more. That would have defeated him more, right? Instead, he wanted to actually be man to man. Mike isn't a man, right? He, he's battling something. I just wanted to showcase Wes because his life's very entertaining to watch and I'm excited to see um, the Wes Watson evolution. Um, how long can he pull the prison yard character and the escorts before something happens? I don't know, but we shall see. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in my next one.